As Guru continued to paint, new styles and techniques began to emerge. In order to accommodate the more recent works, disciples renovated the basement of the gallery. As we worked alongside Guru, we felt, with renewed poignance, the inner bond which unites us. Our sense of fulfillment came not from setting up an art show, but from the awareness of the opportunity Guru was giving us to join him in his mission to inspire humanity. Even the most menial task had meaning. The Supreme said, I want you now to be my absolutely most perfect instrument. I want you to, from now, you may not become an artist, but if you become his best instrument, you become at that time his living breath. The opening night guests at Guru's new exhibit included artists Peter Max and Edith Montlach. As an artist, I must say, I do admire very deeply the sense of color, the rhythm in his strokes, his lovely compositions, the sunny light that emanates from his canvases. I feel that his art has a tremendous way of inspiring and uplifting the viewer. So from that point of view, I do feel that his art is extremely important in this 20th century. And I think it will leave a, a very great mark in the world of art for the future. As the goal of 27,000 came within reach, Guru often painted through the night going without sleep for days at a time. The room in which he was working was surcharged with a force of creative power. Paintings emerged from his hand at an incredible rate. During one 100-minute period, he completed 500 paintings. So in 100 minutes, to continue to the same speed, same tempo, 12 seconds per painting, the human in me will not believe my own human existence cannot fathom the, the divine capacity that God has out of infinite bounty has granted me. But again, the same capacity God has given to everyone. But we have to strive towards the unfoldment of the capacity. We have to unveil, have to unveil the reality within us. On June 27th, the goal of 27,000 paintings was reached. At the huge, newly leased Jarnakala Gallery on Mercer Street, we gathered to celebrate with Guru. He painted one final painting as we watched. The first major chapter of a unique spiritual adventure was drawing to a close. 
As a symbol of our gratitude for the world of delight he had opened to us, some of the disciples presented Guru with 27 gifts. And he offered to each of us 27 sweets. spiritual art I dedicate these aspiring paintings to my spiritual children whose contribution can only be felt and never never be expressed in words to all the disciples I offer my ever-increasing gratitude heart. Supreme, 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 I bow to Thee, I bow to Thee.
we know that there is a starting point we know that there is a goal in our inner life aspiration is our starting point and realization is our first goal and the last goal is a manifestation of the supreme reality on earth in the outer life our starting point is the acceptance of light the first goal is to feel that we are gods chosen children and then our ultimate goal in the outer life we reach when we are fully prepared to fulfill god in his own way in deep action in the heart of the action is the silence of the meditation again in the heart of meditation is the dynamism of action in the morning after i've meditated and the, the sun is up and everything is bright and i'm in the heart i feel that i'm in my heart from meditating my consciousness has entered my heart the idea of working uh devotedly and working in a divine enterprise is to learn how to maintain this elevation to maintain this feeling of of working in the heart we are not in business to make money we're here to perform our spiritual life you have to be completely free and natural and be able to express yourself in any way you become yourself completely when problems seem insurmountable it's very hard to meditate to feel in a meditative state to feel that you are within the heart and it just takes constant work it's really hard work when one has a, a guru of a very high caliber that guru constantly is within you a great deal is expected inwardly when we create something especially working with food when we pr- prepare a dish or bake a loaf of bread and when something comes from within then it has love with it it has devotion and it it is more or less an offering to the supreme to the highest within us especially in food when you create food with joy that food is going to give joy to the person who eats it and this this is a spiritual law somebody once said uh man cannot live by bread alone but when bread is made with love and devotion and joy i think man can live by bread alone